All right, game two, guys. The first game was not was not very high quality. Not very high quality. It makes sense that they stick with the Narban, Skarner. It looks like they're leaving something. I wonder if they're going to ban Jarvid. R7. Kaisa. Still going to ban the Ziggs. Okay, I mean, Tomo Ziggs is fine. Desante first pick again. It, it was okay. It was not incredible. It's not gonna go rumble now, is he? I mean, their idea is so like they ban Kaisa and it's like, so are they banning Kaisa because they wanted Ezreal or are they banning Kaisa because they want to bait Ezreal and then take something else here, like a Jin, like an MF? Renekton. It's a very solid pick. That's fake. Lucian Nami. That's their plan. Lucian Nami. Uh, so we're going to pick Rakan, I assume. Rakan's probably like the best pick. Leo's also very... I mean, you can pick not or Leo, and it's actually kind of scary. They should take support. I mean, there's three supports you can do, but some of these supports are, like, really, really good. Also, Lucian does help them deal with the fact, like, okay, maybe I don't want to take Jarvan, right? Brand was pretty solid, but there's a lot of picks up. So they're gonna take the Nautilus. Okay, because uh, I was thinking to myself, like, these are two such they, those two picks are so good into this duo that like why would you not? And I feel like if you're taking Ezreal, yes, they can play Jarvan into you, but do you really care? Like, I know like Jarvan engage is spooky, but I don't know. To me, I, I don't think it's the, like the biggest deal. In the end of the day. But they did they did not think so. I said I said but like four times. It's pretty bad. Yasuo. So I mean if they're banning Yasuo, that clearly means they're fishing for a mage mid, right? So Yasuo ban and we'll see what they ban because they're fishing for because they can still go in AP, and they can go in AD as well, in mid, and it's fine. Their engage kind of sucks, though. Actually, they need to fish for, like... I think they need to look for, like, Mao. Oops. Mao or, like, Seju, now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. I think they need to look for something like this. And then mid can still be... Oh, mid then would have to be, like, AP. So they're probably matching AP mids. Mage battle. Kali has a lot of value. I mean, Kali's not the greatest into this champ. She's good into this champ. Not the best into this champ either. However, it's a champion he's good with. Clean performance. I don't mind again. Ori might be banned. Play a dynamic bottom lane now. Syndra. But in the meantime, we're getting some exciting lane bans. Another reason why we started really favoring like the meta. The Syndra drops down. Yes, Woe drops down as well. Maybe it's showing that R7 could play what, like a corky here. Maybe a safe pick for mid. I think you said a lot that's quite more like safe. Like, you can go for the blind pick. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're going to do here. I thought we'd see a lot more of. So I think these are things you're trying to do. I think Harry Potter. Harry Potter. I was going to say, if you say Harry Potter. The Jarvan. So they banned the Jarvan anyways. It basically is a respect ban. I don't think it's necessarily that good into their comp, especially if you're playing Renekton. Like, you really don't want to play Jarvan into Renekton. But they're, I guess they're just doing it as a respect ban. I don't think that's... And they, they do need engage, but like I said, I don't know if that's exactly the pick you want to take. Brand. Uh... I mean, like, so, like, this is the thing. I, I will see what they end up doing, but I really don't like the idea of giving Orianna, and then we're fishing for, like, an AP mid. So. That's not a good matchup for Aurora. <laughs> it's actually one of, the, one of the least preferred matchups in many ways, because you walk in, she just cues you, you can't do anything. 
He just progressively leaves the game. So I, I don't like that. Wukong. I don't like that either. I feel like, I feel like this is just it's. We'll see. I feel like at this point, I definitely can just take Maokai if I'm R7. I don't know if that's going to do, but I don't think that's what they're going to do at all, by the way. <laughs> when I'm thinking about it, I don't think that's what they're going to do at all. But the champion has very solid engage. It's very annoying. You can fish for cleanse often. You have a Nautilus. We'll see. The, the, the funny one would be Nocturne. Actually, Nocturne would be pretty interesting. But again, I doubt that's what's going to happen. Oh, but... <laughs> no way. That's funny. It just came to my mind because honestly, like this is like a very common like thought process. And the fact that they only have one tank, it's Lucian Nami who have to play on midwaves often. And then you're having Cassante, Aurora, but you have winning sides. It, it does actually, it can actually work. And he can duel the Wukong. Obviously, if you do Maokai, it's a much safer, generalized pick. Like, you could do Sejuani too. Sejuani is very good for Luchinami because you don't have to full commit into them. And you can catch them. And in many ways, Sejuani is probably, like, better, actually, uh, as a pick overall, if they were to take it. But Nocturne's, like, the more interesting choice. Should they swap? Okay, well, that's, that's really bad. They saw Renekton on bot side too, which looks weird, so why would Fit ever walk in like this? Oh, he's so stupid, man. I actually just lost his flash for freeze. I actually so dumb. They did get vision top side. The thing is, you want to swap in some senses uh, as a hundred, but at the same time, I know playing Lucian Nami, like, it kind of sucks losing some of the, like, the time to actually, like, play those early levels. It's just because they're playing against Nautilus that it could be annoyed, but, like, those initial levels, like, you can actually get a lot out of these champs. This mid matchup is going to suck so much, by the way. The fact that he lost his flash. <laughs> uh, he's going to need Wukong's help. He got spotted on a ward. Uh, it's going to suck. So Summit doesn't choose. I assume he had the chance to maybe cheater, but he decides not to, so he can uh, get vision and then play on the bounce and then draw attention, which is, can be pretty good. He's up a lot of CS again, like a lot, like a, at least plus five CS. Mid is getting absolutely dumpstered. And this time, it looks like River, he's, he's seen the entire time. He was seen crossing upwards, he's seen going for the crab. The Ori is leaning on bot side, so it's not like he can just run in. They have no real, like, threat on mid. It's a, it's a no play. Nautilus went top side. Nautilus went top side. I don't think he should ever do this, especially with them building bot wave. I think this is, like, a pretty terrible idea like even if you might fish one time on the Cassante, because again he's in another situation where this guy crashed pulled the wave and he's playing to freeze on a sniper so he's just getting screwed two games in a row two games in a row because we want to first pick Cassante. that's not great uh and then this time Audi's actually up here though i'll be honest when you look at the condition difference and knowing that wukong did not come up here knowing he cleared upwards just full clear man like this is a dead play like both have tp if Cassante wants to back tp get items and crash the wave so be it who cares but you know 
You go, you send people up here, now, like, Sante actually has some benefit. Like, now it's like, oh, look, I pulled their Nautilus, I stopped their Nocturne from clearing as much, like, as fast. Like, that kind of sucks. So they actually gain an advantage. And, of course, some it's, like, leeching out, like, uh, pushing outwards, so now he's actually growing the wave crash. Which, yeah, didn't really have to do, per se, but... If he gets a solid base and doesn't have to use TP, <clears throat> then so be it. Now this is different. They're actually using this to turn into a dive, which also feels terrible. So R7 just made two big blunders in a row. That's crazy. That's crazy. So think about the game this way. He was in a huge advantageous position where no one could do anything and if he wanted to build crash and then get a base without tp he could have and that would have been really good and then they could play on grubs and then he has tp save huge or he and it also they could also use this tp to do a swap up here he goes bot and if he needs a tp bot he can so be it he has six he can clear the wave huge that's another way so that's one that's one avenue that's two avenues and then the third one is he holds the freeze, uh, and then he TPs back afterwards. So he just tries to gain, maximize as much as he can, and then he'll TP back for grubs. So you have three solid plays, and also your mid is just destroying them. So as long as you're just clearing, he's auto-winning, he's auto-winning, and then bot, I mean, they're losing, but whatever. That That's on them. Oh, this sucks. So now Nocturne's not farming. He's not hitting his 6 as soon as he can. We used Renekton R. My Ori wants the base. Ooh. But now we fish for another play. Now we just burned a ton of time on the map. And then the Cassante is going bot and he has TP. So it's actually a win for 100. I... Yeah, it's a definitely a win for 100. How the hell does R7 win this game? I'm actually so curious how did they win this game. Because already this looks like bad. Like this just looks bad. Damn, did he gets out too? Because the lane swap, okay, so it's like the lane assignments, like Nami's bot with Desante, and the Lucian's just chilling mid, which is like. It's okay. This is not preferred, but at least it looks like Aurora can kind of like farm a little bit more top, which is big. They have solid vision top. They eventually want to have the Lucianami join together. Keeping them mid is like fine, I guess, but I mean, the Kasante will drop more CS overall on bot. And these guys decide to use their first Nocturne R on top side. It's probably like one of the slippery targets. Could they even get her? Well, they don't know where she jumped. So he used R, and then he used W. He just needs to sit still here. Because also he has this. I guess he seems like he, she ran this way, but he kind of mistimed it. That's crazy that he gets out. Oh my god, Quid. My goat. So now he burned both, both ultis. Huge. Then we make a mid play. Kind of sucks that he dies, but... Okay, so you got Ori Flash. That's not bad. And then Cassante's hitting bot. Okay, so 100 is progressively winning the game. Cool. Awesome. Rubs is in two minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, he tricked them. He did, he did well with it. It's like a 50-50 on like what Nocturne needs to decide what to do. But probably the best thing would have been to just stand still and see what happens. 
because she also could use her R to like reposition back down. So probably is better to just stay in the middle. Now the upside, now see like even though 100, there's some of their lane times does benefit like their solos, especially like getting Aurora out of like the Ori matchup for a bit, like that was huge. And Cassante got some plays, it did mean that like R7's bot lane is also not as pressured. So Renekton is going to have TP soon, Cassante does have TP. Renekton should not be in a position where he's fighting Kasante. And yet he is. I don't like that. Like, I think as Renekton, he should just be stalling and just making sure he's in a position to TP because he's just a very strong champ. Especially like in these early stages, like he's just a very strong champ. Ooh, they just got Ori comboed. Whoa, 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 They're bottling decks, so they don't have flashes. It's hard for them to walk in. Well, that was incredibly dangerous. I mean, if Tomo gets hit by that, he's just fucked. But he has E, so he should always be able to miss. But then he's... That's it. Now you're just r and you're not getting in range. But then they got Ori combo. Oh my god, it's so rough, man. That's so rough. Because Aurora's also second to this situation, right? Does he move too early? Because well, Wukong's going mid for attack. These guys actually could just be chilling on the mid wave and they're probably fine overall. So it'd be better if Wukong was going through top to help Aurora? Most likely, yeah. And then these guys just contest second because they actually have decent vision and they're just kind of chilling. But if they want to clear this way and Aurora's second... Also, River should not just do the grubs. He should definitely just keep running up. And then if Nocturne pops up, then he backs off. But he doesn't start grubs. Because he's hopping over, but the Aurora is like late. And the Wukong has no. F How did he get over? He used Blast Cone? Yo, I might just throw my hook at this guy straight up. I mean, like, it's good to throw the hook at the dual lane. I agree with that. But he also could just fish on uh, Wukong. And. Yeah, this is dangerous. Like, no flashes. Like, they're really bold to just run in. And, like, the bot lane just got in range, so they just got deleted. There's no way Wukong... Does Wukong actually win this? Oof. That was just bad. Like, Honor was a straight up winning up to this point. Also, this is one of those situations where they already have three grubs. So, like, if it looks hard, they don't have to commit. Like, they could just, like, farm up, play for camps, and chill out. But they opted to take this fight. And the grubs are still up and they're still over forcing this. Their Cassante has first move. So their Cassante has first move. Absolutely beautifully on top. Ezreal's on mid. We don't know where Nocturne is. We know he doesn't have R. Our Wukong is doing the grubs while we're contesting this vision. Wukong should literally be in this area helping do this so we can connect these two. Our Aurora has TP, but he's going to have first move. Just slow play it. Why would the Wukong not just walk up and help delete this? And they still sit up there waiting for a taker as Dredgeline pulls it in. Because now he's just getting played on. And now they, like, they both TP because they're scared of the situation. 
fearing again as his act okay excuse me it's up in 10 seconds i think it's fine yeah that's the last title well just about to tick over the title maybe not so what if he's trying to heal from ayla as well good summits in when he finds only the clone rivers okay well now wukong's just stuck here by the way not up and available it seems like as well the culling is now there as shockwave is only on the sniper but that's the front line look at the damage from tomo r7 have to leave river is again fishing as cyclone comes up in five seconds sniper almost dead the tidal wave is there quit pokes prods and now here's river we got caught he wins as kane has jumped on and a hundred thieves knew their cooldowns so much better uh oh summit But yeah, so if, if I'm R7, like I don't have Nocturne R. I, again, I don't think like th this is like pretty terrible on how like they're going about this, right? Don't really like this. Uh, and if they think they can get out, because you're not gonna fight this, right? Like your your Ezreal's like way behind, so you're not gonna fight this. The Ezreal could have crashed mid. Like he definitely could have just crashed mid at this point. And then you just play to get out. And now Andre is like in a weird spot. But because Ezreal moves all the way over, it's like, okay. And then I think at this point, you give them this space and he should walk over. Like Renekton should just like walk over this way. And so he has a flank and then he can like press this way. Because they can't just go like in the middle, like in front of them, unless they have not been. Well, just about to tick over the tidal wave being up, so... And Ori Shockwave is not even up yet, either. He finds only the clone rivers at the back of pit for the time being. His cyclone not up and available, it seems like, as well. The culling is now there as... The Shockwave is just bad, too. And yeah, the Nocturne R is not up yet, so, like, you need to slow play this. Like... I'm even okay with them like forcing them out. Forcing them out, he, he flashes out. But now it's already weird. Also, it's weird that Ezreal's going upward. Like, he should just stay in the pit and just fight in the pit because this guy can't get back in. And then he could keep. Because now he's like awkwardly over here. Okay. Now we're all moving this way. Now we're necking ours up. Again, fishing as Cyclone comes up in five seconds. Sniper oh. almost dead. The tidal wave is there. Quit pokes prods and now. <sighs> I don't know. I just keep watching this because I'm just trying to figure out like. Because Renekton has the flank, so he did end up going around, which is good. I think he just saves his E. No? Like, his E is still, like, chilling. And he can just walk this way. Yeah. I think he could have. Hmm. Ori also needs to have ball for this area. And I think that they know that they have to come back in this area. I think these guys need to hold this position. This might not be as bad. Okay. I know it's took me a while to get to this, like, point. But I think the ball needs to be here with Ori. Yes, they're going to try to, like, force into you, which is going to be scary. The Ezreal can, like, auto this situation, whatever. These guys are fine here. And if he has R soon, I don't know what his R cooldown is. Um. And then Nautilus just chills here. Like, Nautilus doesn't need to run into this guy. Like, when he does walk in, then he can run in, and then you can toss your abilities on him. But, you need to control this space. I think Nocturne also could just go on this guy, too. Straight up. Like, I feel like this is, like, whatever. I think Renekton could just go on this guy alone, and then Nocturne goes on this guy. And that actually makes way more sense. That actually makes way more sense now that I think about it. If Nocturne's on him, you need to force him out. I think you just have to force this guy out. I think if Nocturne's here, if you have two here, this is impossible to hold. Always. Because the Nautilus can't hold this. And if you put damage into him, then they're just going to walk in and then it's going to be awkward. Yeah. I think that's how it should have been played out, but... 
They put two members in, the Cassante got a lot of space, and then the fight kind of just turned out the way it did. This is one of those situations where when you empty too many CDs, too many like members into a, a guy who's already in a bad position, he ends up making like and he has flash so he can actually like get away from the situation. You end up inting the fight. That's kind of how it works. Like I have a recent clip where I was playing Elise and level 3 invade. It worked. They're chasing me and their enemy Zed uses... I knew he was going to use W, his shadow, and use his full combo on me. And if I flash it, he has nothing. Same situation there. No fear, no renekt in W. Like, they have literally nothing to counter deal with. Uh, so they got the Herald, and that was just from, like, tempo on the map, right? Like, they're back on the map, and these guys chose to go to the Dragon over the Herald. So they traded it out that way, right? Nocturne takes the blue, they have good vision bot side, the wave pushed. We're taking our bases, Lucian's back mid, we're late on the map. We're just defending, which is just a defense situation. We're just defending. We're not making a play, we're just defending. They're naturally bought first. We're dedicating Wukong to look at them. He thinks it's a play now because he took damage. But they have first move. And Quint just kills himself. That's... That's crazy. The Ori TP. And now, oh my god, why is Cassante TPing? This play is so dead. This play is very obviously dead. They're never winning this. Yep, why are we teleporting? He's a goner. That's crazy. So they just lost their TP. Played to kill themselves. River knew, should know, that that's just never a play. And the Keen TP is actually int. Like, he never needs the TP there. Like, they're they winning that very easily. He never needs the TP there. But he did. So he made the play not nearly as good for R7. And then Sniper made it better again. Now Renekton has TP. Quid has a TP. Oh, fuck me. And they know he has no flash. It's a little bit different having the Ori on mid. Because in theory, the Ori should just be going bot now. To, like, take the wave. But she's mid to defend because the Ezreal's a little bit late. And then the Nocturne, instead of doing, like, his normal clear. Because this wave is, like, technically dead. But they're actually able to reach him and then with the portal too, and so he dies. So that's a that's a kill I would not expect to But because of the way the map was using the portals, they got him. That was good. That was pretty impressive that they actually found that kill. Because he had it, like like because the Ori showed mid, like it should have been fine for Quid. Uh, Why are we TPing for this? Like, I like that they have the bot push. So the bots are already like, because you know, he dropped the wave, right? And Cassante pushed top. And Ori has no TP, by the way. So technically... If Gasanate wants to, he could just sit here and just move down. And if Ori moves in an awkward spot, he actually could play on her and pull. So uh, him going around is weird. Th this I don't like. This I don't care for. Because if he's here, now these guys need to be worried. Now they need to start playing like around here. And then Wukong's going to come over. 
and they still don't want to pull. Not really. Yeah, they shouldn't be able to get a lot of potential TP. This could be a dive, but the wave's thinned out. They're going to TP to save to get it here, though. Aurora but because he shows here, now it's like, now they can just clearly hit this with, like, no one really being in a threatening position. This could be a dive. So he TPs. But it's like, to me, this place then just dead. Like, on a ward spotted out as Andre Thieves are still so desperate to try and get this push in for mid turret. Yeah, this place is dead. To get it here, though, Aurora. Potential TP. This could be a dive, but the wave's thinned out. They're gonna TP to save it for the time being. Just and then Nocturne is gonna make this messy too. Takes a lot of damage with the culling. Oh, River, no. Shockwave is fucking massive too. Like if you're gonna use your TP this way, the play's already dead. So like you, you use TP. This play's dead. Renekton actually can push another wave bot if he wants to. But because they're like extending into it, then they're gonna play. They're gonna pull. Like River should know better. Like you're not going in. Like don't go in. You don't need to go in. But he goes in. Yeah, he gets shockwave. Flash, 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 flash. Four flashes on. Renekton has flash. Renekton should have flashed that, by the way. If Renekton flash Q's here, it's already looking really fucking scary. And then Ori has flash as well, so this could be really, really, ba really bad. This doesn't even turn out as good for R7 until Quid kills himself, which is hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. That's so stupid. So, River ints here, it looks bad. Summit ints it, now it's good, then Quid ints it. So the, it's just teams taking, going back and forth, back and forth on ints. Huh. So clear this is what the series is going to be like, because if the second game is like, still this way, then we're basically trying to pick champs that reduce inting, pretty much. Like, we're champs that basically reduce inting. Also, their bot lane's down 40 CS again. So their bot lane's being completely fucked. I can't see R7 winning anything. Like... Like, after this series, I, I just cannot imagine these guys winning. Uh, it's it's so it's it's just not enough and for 100 it's just awkward because it's like yeah i think the, the way they're playing is also pretty pretty bad the submarine he's getting a lot of deep pushes to the renekton I mean, they're trying to get control on mid. Dragon's not for 330, so they're just looking to get vision. The Asante should go top and take this wave, and the Aurora should go bot. Like, it's not the ideal matchup for Aurora, but at the same time, it's like... You might as well shove up the wave. Like, someone either top, mid or top needs to shove the top wave at this point. Like, I don't know why you're not, but, like, one of you needs to shove this wave. But you don't. So, okay, so, like, Kassan is going bot. Okay, we still need to shove the top wave. Like, there's so much focus on defending and dealing with the situation that, like, no one, like, we're not doing anything. And, like, you look at this poll, like, cause, like, Renekton just has this move because if you, like, the situation, right? Oh, fuck. But, like, it, this was not nearly as good because, like, it's so deep. Like, we don't have a return play, but also at the same time, we're already TP mid. Like, he got this TP off really quick, which is impressive that, like, Sniper got that TP off. And Keen's, like, caught. And it was a good play by Sniper. It was definitely a good play by Sniper. But Wukong should always be going backwards, not forward. Or he needs to go upwards. One of the two, but regardless, he just kind of... can't really go too deep. 
God, CO sucks. That guy sucks, man. Then he killed himself. That's just... It's just the timing... A lot of the timings in these plays are just bad. They're definitely just poor, poor timings. And mid, mids are, mid, mid laners are not farmed. Like, the Ori needs to have way more CS than this. Like, we need to be pump, like, pumping CS into this guy. Because he should be way stronger at this point. But it, it basically everyone's just sitting around mid, mid waves. That's basically what's happening. It's like an A ram. I mean, he doesn't have flash. Like, Adi's killing himself to make this play happen. Summon is just fighting everyone. That's the issue picking Wukong into this, technically. I know, like, Sejuani and uh, Malka have their own issues playing into this stuff, but at least they're tankier, they can live longer, and they have better CC, typically. And, and the engagers are not nearly as, like... Like, you, you're, like, you have to literally put yourself in danger to make those situations happen versus those other two things. So they try for a pick, and his sniper has a solid flank situation, and they kill this guy for free. Okay, River's in it. What happened to Quid? Quid doesn't even need to do anything. Quid doesn't even need to R here. Quid just needs to, like, chill out. But he kills himself. Okay, so Quid kills himself. This is a really bad game by Quid. That guy died for free. This is already like... Don't... Yeah, they need to not continue that. <laughs> they gained way too much poke damage. Okay. This is weird. I'm really confused at how they lost. AD flash is on. Sniper's having a pretty solid, like, game impact, honestly. Despite the, like, the way, like, some of the farming is going, like, he's having a pretty solid impact in the fights. River is, like, 50-50. Like, cause they, <laughs> they keep doing the same play. And it works, like, it does do damage. Like, it does push Tomo out. Not, like, Tomo can't really do anything about it, but... So, Adi's just dying for these plays. And now we have advantage. We're dropping bot wave so we can play mid top. We have vision. Aura is very safe. They have a summit TP flank. Oh, this is definitely dead. Keen lived. Oh no, the fucking Ori lived. He did a lot of damage there. Quit just killed himself again. That is a very good cast by him. He's running it. He literally is. 
But look at the map. So they just did this. He's going to shove out pot. We have TP on Kasante coming up. Top wave is already chilling. Can Kasante not just go bot at this point? I know they can play mid bot because of how push this is. And maybe this is. I don't know. Maybe this is better this way. But the fact that this pink gets ignored is hilarious. Uh, because if he goes bot, he can intercept it. This wave is already chilling, so you just need to intercept it here. And then you're already playing here, right? And then you can lean either way. The tier twos are stripped besides this. So it's not like you're like in a rush to go for this. And if you meet resistance here, then you can always just go into bot super easily. It gives you basically a little bit more leeway. It's, no, it's not a big deal to do top mid. It, it really isn't. Um, but I think also if they're going to do it this way, they need to get this ward so Aurora can actually like play in this zone. Because if she can, then it's really spooky for R7. But it doesn't look like they're going to let that happen. And then, naturally, it's like, yeah, we got the Summit flank. And then he gets, he sees him. Like, Summit is basically a human ward, sees the Lucian, so he can go on him. And there's, there's nothing, like, these guys can do. And I don't know why Tomo ran so far, by the way. Like, I don't know why he's running this way, by the way. Like, the second I see this guy here, just play here. Play on your pink, run this way. He can't catch you. You're fine. Just, like, play this way. And then Aurora TP's here. And we're playing like this. And if they push too far, then Wukong flanks them. Simple. But Tomo, like, runs away this way, which is, like, terrible. He panics, dies. And then Quid just kills himself again. Like, Quid has just been killing himself like, over, over and over, over and over. So this could be drag for R7. They need to clear the waves, which they're doing, which is good. So we're clearing the waves. And I guess River's getting caught after losing the dragon. Well, Hunter needs to be on defense for a little bit while they take the waves and regain control back. The Ori gets decapped. It's super over though. Like the Lucian will. Like the Lucian needs to actually build MR. By the way, like he's going Sonia's, which I guess that's one way to do it. In the end, it's a very useless item though compared to game like Maw. To be honest. They've really not gotten much value out of Lucian being on mid waves either. Like, I don't recall like too many situations where like they're actively getting ship damage that like matters. He's just too afraid to walk up, but he has Zonius now, so like he needs to like have some balls. Okay, Colleen doesn't do anything. Summit's cheating this wave, but like, River can't stop that guy. Oh, that is interesting. I did not expect that one. Because he has no flash, and he decided to run into the bot side, but we're just A ramming. So now he's in an awkward position, and they actually see it. They're willing to use these CDs, kill him. And now they need to run. We decided to continue pushing into this, even though it was just Nami who was dead. Oh, that was not a good W. So this is Baron off that play. And we have Soul coming up, and they have Baron. So this should be done deal. No flash on Quid. He's gonna go. <laughs> good night! Good night! Oh my god, good night! That's it. Okay. MVP. Keen and Summit. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think Adi had some decent moments, but he also had some kind of inti moments.
But like Keenan Summit definitely performed. Worst player of the game. I mean, it's quid. A thousand percent it's quid. This guy just was atrocious, this game. Atrocious. And then, because they drafted, and, and I'm going to say Wukong, because I think this pick just was not it. But this, this series is wild. Again, these guys are perma losing the ball lane. Like, these guys are, like, seem really, really useless. So a lot of it is just depending on, the, like, how the top side performs. Because even though these guys, like, won handedly, they didn't do anything. Like, I felt like the Lushinami didn't, like, do nearly as much as they should could have for the advantage they had. So we'll see how the top side shapes up, because this is, like, what's going to determine the, the series.